and welcome to the season six premiere of My Dad Listens to This. I'm Juliet the Daughter. And let's make me Kevin the Dad. <laughs> season six. I know. Can you believe we've gotten to this point already? And thank you to loyal listeners who have been listening since season one. Wow. We, we're seriously, thank you very much. And also, before we start the episode, uh, Dad's a little bit sick today, so you might hear some coughing and sneezing. I'll try to keep it to a minimum. But we're going to push through. And as always, with kind of our unofficial tradition, we mostly start off every year by reviewing a woman pop artist. And this year is going to be no exception as we talk about the irresistible Kathy Dennis. So, Dad, what do we need to know? We need to know that Catherine Roseanne Dennis was born March 25th, 1969 in Norfolk, England. She says she grew up in the middle of a beet field a mile from the nearest bus stop. And I believe one of the neighbors was one Mr. Schrute. Anyway, <laughs> her mom, Linda, was a singer and her dad, Alan, a jazz and classical pianist. She was influenced by both of them and started, and I quote, piddling around on piano since I was nine. Hmm. When she was 13, the family moved to more urban Norwich. By the time she was 15, Kathy was a big dance music fan and started analyzing the music. She started writing songs and even wrote with her dad. She went to the studio in Norwich in a bid to record a track. Nothing came of it, but her course was set. At 17, she was performing at Norwich's Mecca Ballroom, which is now a bingo hall, hmm. when pop entrepreneur Simon Fuller stopped by. He was looking for a female singer and signed Kathy to 19 Management, named after his client Paul Hardcastle's huge hit of the same title, which was 19, not 19 Management. Um, she also signed to Polydor Records. 1989, Kathy got her first hit singing with D-Mob, a.k.a. Dancing Danny D, a.k.a. Daniel Kojo Poku on Come On, Get My Love. That's a name. Which was used on her solo debut album. And that's the, the way of the world, not the Earth, Wind, and Fire song. Mm. Come On, Get My Love hit top 10 on Billboard's Hot 100. Her debut album, Move to This, was released in August 1990. Kathy got songwriting credit on nine of its ten songs. She also co-produced six of them. Five singles were released, Come On and Get My Love, Just Another Dream, which hit number nine, mm. Touch Me All Night Long, went to number two, more about that later, Oh yeah. <laughs> and Too Many Walls, which hit number eight. The fifth single, Everybody Move, stalled out at number 90, but did better in the UK at number 25. She hit the road as part of a package tour that stopped at the PPAC, which is the Providence Performing Arts Center. Yeah. Did you see the, her? And yes, I went to see her. Specifically her. I had to sit through another bad creation. Think of Jackson 5 for the 90s. That's and, interesting. believe it or not, Celine Dion, who was just starting out. Oh, and she got the city confused, <clears throat> right? And she got lustily booed by the audience when she called Providence Boston. Ooh, never do that. That's the kiss of death. But she apologized and she won us all back. Mm. Um, Kathy came out and she did, I think she did three songs. And after she was done, I, I left. And yes. as, as I was getting out of my seat, someone said to me, but there were more acts. To which I replied, I saw who I wanted to see. And now I'm going. Bye-bye. Yeah, and kept moving. And you beat the traffic in Providence before yeah. everyone else got out. Yep. So, win-win. In 1991, she, along with David Morales, contributed the track Find the Key to Your Life for one of the greatest movies ever made. Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Nope. Teenage nope. Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, oh. The Secret of the Ooze. Just, oh. just, just be a little patient there. <laughs> Kathy's second album, Into the Skyline, was released in August 1992. Five singles were released, but only the first, You Lied to Me, cracked the top 40 at number 32. She made a, a cameo appearance on Beverly Hills 90210 and sang three songs. Interesting. And now you can get excited. Thank you. In 1993, she sang an end credit duet with Lance Ellington, for the movie, wait for it. Go ahead. Robin Hood Men in Tights. And what was the song called? Where is the one? No, Marion. Marion. Oh, yeah, but that's the start of the verse. My bad. Okay. She started work on a third album that was to be called Inspiration, but she didn't feel so inspired. inspired to, you could say? Yeah, to make anything of it at the time. However, she did co-write her first song for another artist, Danny Minogue, younger sister of... Kelly. Very good. Uh, the song, Love's on Every Corner, did respectable in the UK. In 1995, Simon Fuller signed the Spice Girls. 
<gasps> and Kathy admitted she missed the boat in writing major hits for them. However, oh, however, gosh. yes, she did write a song for them called Bumper to Bumper, the mind reels, <laughs> uh, which wound up as the B-side to Wannabe. And the next thing Kathy knew, she was a swimming in royalty checks. Good for her. Her next move was putting out her third and so far final album, oh. 1996's Am I the Kind of Girl. This was her Britpop oh, yeah. move, which was totally unexpected. Now, Britpop emphasized Britishness, and it was a popular type of alt-rock. Uh, so basically, they weren't making any concessions to the American market. Mm -hmm. uh, the big four Britpop bands at the time were Blur, Yay, Oasis, Ugg, Pulp, not bad, and Suede, also not bad. Uh, Three out of four. Yeah. That's pretty good. I'm sorry, but listeners out there, for me, Oasis, highly overrated, Blur, underappreciated. Have you ever seen that meme where it's Mr. Bean copying off another person's test and it's Oasis copying <laughs> off the Beatles? No. It's so funny. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, the Kinks Ray Davies and XTC's Andy Partridge are looked on as the godfathers of Britpop, and Kathy actually wound up writing a song with each of them for oh. this album. Okay, then that explains something that's going to come up a bit later. Okay, Am I the Kind of Girl was only available as an import, and she parted ways with her label, Polydor, in 2000. Over the years, she said she's going to come out with a fourth album, but nothing yet. Mm. In 1997, Simon Fuller created the group S Club 7, and the reason he did that was he wanted a more tractable version of the Spice Girls. Oh, in no. That they wouldn't have an opinion, and they would do whatever he said. Oh. And yes, there were seven of them, and it was a couple of guys, a couple of girls, and... I listened to their stuff and it was like, like very, very sugary sweet. Saccharin. Yeah. Oof. But Kathy did not miss the boat with this group. She co wrote almost all their hit singles and she also wrote the theme to some TV show called um, American Idol. And, That's her? Yep. Wow, okay. And she co wrote the fastest selling debut in UK history for one Will Young the winner of Pop Idol. The song was called Anything is Possible, and it sold over 400,000 copies in one day and went on to sell 1.8 million total. And Will Young, being the grateful singer that he was, said he absolutely hated the song and he never sang it in any of his concerts. Well, screw you too, man. Because I guess it was just, like, just saturated over there. Like, you couldn't oh, escape it. okay. Um... Oh, yeah, and she also co-wrote Can't Get You Out of My Head huh. um, and Come Into My World for Kylie, Toxic for Britney Spears, what? and I Kissed a Girl for Katy Perry. Holy crap, she's fine then. She's set for life. Yep, Kathy went on to win Best Dance Recording Grammy for two th in 2004 for co-producing Come Into My World. She's won of a number of Ivor Novello Awards, which honors songwriters over in England. Mm hmm and in 2018, she won the Ivor Novello Outstanding Song Collection Award, which basically honored her entire career and also made her um, the woman with the most Ivor Novello Awards. Cool. Six so far. As for me, I first heard Just Another Dream, Touch Me and Come and Get My Love and brought Move to This. And I really liked half of that album a lot. Mm -hmm. Then I picked up Into the Skyline, which I didn't like that much. There were some okay songs on it, but it wasn't Kathy's fault. Chet Betty Bone, who was Madonna's producer, produced the album, and I don't think he was a good fit. Okay. Because his production brought a coldness to almost every single song. Oh, mm, yeah. That's, that's yeah. not good. Um, I had to order Am I the Kind of Girl from Amazon, like I said, because it was only available as a Japanese import. And again, I really loved about half that album. Now, The Irresistible Kathy Dennis came out in 2000. And again, import, had to order it from Amazon. And whoever made the song selection, I thought, did a great job because they picked almost every single song I would have picked. But I do have a few quibbles, and we'll get to those as we go along. Now, as for the packaging, I wish the booklet came with lyrics and who wrote, produced, played what, 
And I think the cover could be better. And she's gone. She's like covering her ears and like screaming. Almost, yeah. Almost like Edvard Munch, but you made it poppy in it, 90s. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of makes it look like she's blocking her ears because she can't stand the sound of her own songs. <laughs> I, they I, didn't I, think that one through. Yeah, did I guess they? it's like she's supposed to be excited that was in the middle of some sort of dance, dance move. Yeah. And if they had gone one frame forward or backwards, yeah. maybe it would have been a little better. Because it looks like she is resisting, and the title is Irresistible. Help me. Yes. Help, help. Anyway, let's jump into this. I did have one anecdote about mm. Kathy Dennis, though. When I was listening to the songs that you sent me, there was a clip. I guess there's a game show in the UK called Pointless. And she was on a celebrity edition, but the celebrity edition was called Pointless Celebrities. Uh, so I got the wrong impression when I read that title. I was like, oh, well, that's just hurtful. But it's not related to that at all. Okay. First track, Touch Me All Night Long. Dad has an amusing anecdote about this song involving me, but I didn't remember any of the song at first. The verses didn't sound familiar, but once the chorus kicked in, I was like, okay, I remember this, kind of. Having sex with someone doesn't always mean you're in love with them. Sometimes it means you want to have a good time or that you just trust this particular person to be at your most vulnerable with. But in this one, Kathy is putting the pieces together and realizing, oh, no, I really love this person and this is the way for me to show them. But she says the words make me love you as if she's still not 100% sure and doing this will make her absolutely certain. I really like the story of this one, but the chorus is the only thing that grabs me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is from Move to This. And this was originally done by Fonda Ray and appears on the 1985 soundtrack for A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Ooh. Freddy's Revenge. Wow. In this case, Touch is spelled T-U-C-H. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was written by either Gregory Carmichael or Carmichael Gregory and Patrick Adams. They both got credit for Kathy's rewrite. Her version went all the way to number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1991. So, yeah, in this song, there's lots of holding and touching and hugging and kissing and other stuff. And I think it all comes down to one line, a new recreation to channel all this energy. Yep. That's gotta freaking come out. Anyway, music-wise, it's classified as house pop, which per Wikipedia is a cross between house and dance pop music. It's, okay. I, I know. It's radio friendly and it's a throwback to 70s disco. I have a theory that this is a term created by another uh, music critic who didn't know how to describe the music and was just like, you know what? Screw it. House pop. Like when we talked about KD Lang with, you know what? Screw it. Cow punk. That's yeah, what this is. Because I, I was looking and I'm like diving deep in, well, what's house? And it's just getting into all these different subcategories. People need to stop. And it's just like slicing and dicing. I, I got to a point where I just thought. I, I can't do this. I cannot do this. We don't have to label everything. It's no. catchy and it sounds good. The end. Mm. Um, I think we just do have to label bottles of poison just so we know not to drink them. Exactly. That's anyway, Touch Me is very catchy and it is a nice opener to this collection. Now, way, way back in the day when you were very small, like, oh. Four or five? Yeah, I used to play this song a lot in my car until one day I heard a four or five-year-old in the back seat sing. <laughs> Catch me all night long. So that was the end of that. And I have no memory of that <laughs> at all. Oh, I do. You, you, you were in good voice and you were tuneful, but I, you know, not my finest moment of parenting. No, it's like when the old voice recitals I used to do, not with my current teacher, but back in the day where these little six-year-old girls would be singing and dancing to these songs that were totally not appropriate for their age range. And the parents and the rest of the students would be like, Oh my God! Who the heck picked this? Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any so after that, from that point on, anytime I played this CD in the car, I would skip over that song until I thought you were appropriately old enough to listen to that. That's probably why. Which I don't was probably it. like last week, I think. <laughs> yeah, it sounds. But that right. reminds me of the story Mike told me when he grew up. Um, um, his parents got the White Album. So this is 1968. Mm -hmm. He's five years old at the time. Why don't we do it in the road? Oh, no. <laughs> so he said every time, just when that song was about to come on, either his mom or dad would get up, move the needle over to the next song, which was I Will, uh -huh. problem solved. There you go. Then they got to a point where they realized, okay, we don't have to move the needle anymore. They're old enough now. Yeah. yeah. Next track, My Beating Heart. 
Those distorted synth notes sounds like if someone wrote a song about the beating heart and Poe's telltale heart. But it doesn't last too long, just enough to pique your interest before transitioning into a ballad. This is basically the happier version of Suzanne Vega's Blood Makes Noise. Okay. Kathy is explaining <sighs> to the object of her affection, How can you not tell that I love you? My heart is beating so loud. I can't lie to you when it's like this. Which harkens back to Telltale Heart, but also reminds me of the visuals in cartoons where a character is in love and their heart is pounding out of their chest. Yeah. And while her heart is making a loud cacophony, Kathy's voice is sweet and gentle. A nice little touch is how she seems to gasp and choke when she's overwhelmed. There's also a very nice little instrumental with a saxophone to hit the ballad home. I started swaying too. Very sweet and melancholy and beautiful. Yep, this is also from Move to This. Uh, words fail her, but her beating heart says all that needs to be said. And this is a nice grand get it on slow jam. And looking back, I am surprised I didn't skip over this one while you were in the back seat. Or that I didn't belt out singing this one either, yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe you liked faster tunes. But well, I do age, like, yeah. like the... Um, I don't know if it's like a sigh at the end. If you mm -hmm. listen closely, you, you hear that. You yeah. hear that? Or like the heart is just, the heart is just pounding. Her heart gave out. She, yeah. Kathy's she's dead. She just needs to rest and call yeah. the EMTs. Yeah, exactly. It's like that meme I saw of the reality of when the Grinch's heart grew three size plus two and the Grinch is just dead on the road. Yeah. Next track, Just Another Dream. Mm. This is the first song of hers I really remember loving. An internal crisis you can dance to. Everything around her is indicating that this person could be the one. And Kathy admits she's having fun with them, but she's wondering, is this for real or is it just another dream? Whereas she says, is this for real or is it just another dream? Just a dream. Which is a valid fear, but never has it been so catchy, especially with the male backup singer that Dad wonderfully gave us a rendition of. She's slowly losing her mind, but I think part of her loves the drama of should I or shouldn't I? And then at one point, the music stops as if Kathy's thought is making her stop still. Then the music starts up again as she realizes, ooh, this could be real. Let's go! Love this song so much. This is also from Move to This, and this was the second single off the album. But it was the first one I heard. Uh, basic plot, is this love for real or see song title? Mm -hmm. uh, the phrase funky love will appear in another song soon. And again, musically, it's very Kathy. Yeah. I don't know how to... It's definitely out of her own sound. Mm -hmm. uh, you definitely want to move to it, no pun intended. Um, good video, too. I don't know if you got a chance to see the video, but it's kind of like a lot of close-ups of Kathy and her bobbed do, like she's like a red-headed Louise Brooks. Mm -hmm. But the lighting is so bright, though, you'd swear she doesn't have a nose. It's kind of oh. disconcerting. Oh, <laughs> uh, and... Uh, that is not Rick Astley on backing vocals. That is Dancing Danny D. Dancing I can see why people Danny think it's D, Rick. But, oh, yeah. I mean, it sounds just like him. Man, that would be the collaboration of the century for me anyway. Next track, Too Many Walls. Another song where I didn't realize I knew it until I heard the chorus. Kathy still loves the partner she's no longer with. Everyone tells her to get over it, but she can't because it's too painful. Too many walls between her and her person, and too many dreams have been shattered. And then I also remembered the key change I didn't like, because it goes into a major key, I think, or at least a key that sounds too happy. Maybe it's supposed to signify she's accepted what's happened to her by the end of the song or something. Happy she found her strength within, but the song doesn't do it for me. Oh, okay, I you, know. Just you hear it. it. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, this is also from Move to This. It's a mid-tempo ballad uh, written by Kathy in The Art of Noises, Ann Dudley. Ann wrote the music and Kathy the lyrics. It made it to number eight on Billboard's Hot 100. <clears throat> so this, Just Another Dream, Touch Me, and the first single, Come and Get My Love, which should have been on here. I think I would remove my beating heart and then mm -hmm. substitute Come and Get My Love. Mm -hmm. They all made the top ten, but the album moved to this, only made it to number 67 on Billboard's 200 albums chart, mm. which is a little odd. Mm. I guess people were more interested in buying the singles than the album itself. Mm -hmm. Kathy told Rolling Stone magazine she thought this was the best song on Move to This. She said it was about when you want to be together with someone, but other people's opinions and prejudices get in the way. And I vaguely remember, and I could be wrong about this, but mm -hmm. I vaguely remember her saying that this was based on a personal experience. Mm -hmm. but she didn't go into a lot of detail. But I think based on the line, you're so young is all I can say, I think it might have been a May-December romance that was being prevented. Maybe. Or maybe it was, maybe it's also a maturity gap, especially if you're a teenager or you're in your 20s and you're starting to notice 
that the guy isn't maturing at the same pace as you. And you're like, I, I can't deal with this anymore. I need a man, not a boy. This is easily the saddest song on here. Yeah. Next track, Everybody Move. That opening of Everybody to the Floor got my attention. And then as the music kicked in, I remembered this instantly. This was interesting timing as I listened to this track in particular, because I just watched a new episode of The Crown where William attends a student fashion show and Kate walks the runway in a very scantily clad outfit, so kind of worked. In the show, it's clear she wore it on purpose. In this song, Kathy is clearly uh, clearing the dance floor and dancing at her most explicit for the object of her affection, and it's catchy as hell. I really hope that this got the play in the clubs that it deserved. Something tells me it didn't, but we need to bring back this song at parties, damn it. It's just fun, and it makes you feel empowered and good. Yeah, this is a stomp and remix of the album version. Yeah. The album version is good. This is so much better. Agreed. Um, This is either a song about dancing or just everyone getting the hell out of her way so her love can come through. Could be both. Like, she's clearing the dance floor, being like, hey, move it, move it. I'm trying to show off for him. And she doesn't want Everyone anybody. just stay on the sides. Yep, exactly. And everything, nobody will get hurt. She wants her John Travolta moment. And Funky Love definitely makes its presence known here. Funky Love, the Funky Love. Mm. Yep. Uh, this is one of my favorite Kathy Dennis songs mm-hmm. ever. And I don't know if you got a chance to see the video, but it's a hoot. A little bit, bits and pieces, because I was trying to listen to it more than watch the music video. But she, uh, she just stomps in this mansion pretty authoritatively. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of Caddyshack with the snobs versus the slobs kind of set up in the club. So what are you saying? Someone should just edit Rodney Dangerfield and Kathy Dennis's place in that music video with him just dancing with his arms? Hey, he's, he's got some good moves there. <laughs> hey, everybody, we're going to get laid. <laughs> Oh, baby, you must have oh, something with electricity. Oh, well, the fine boy, fine boy, you got that. Oh, no, I know why tigers eat their young. <laughs> Looking at you, I can really understand. I can understand why some animals eat their young. My last note about Rodney Dangerfield in that movie is I felt so bad that he didn't know he was funny because he's so used to people laughing, but on a movie set you can't laugh, so he was just nervous the whole time. Well, that also happened to, um, uh, yes, we're going off on a tangent here for a minute. But we're just going to wrap it up. That also happened with um, Robin Williams when he was doing Good Morning Vietnam. Oh, when yeah. When he was doing the DJ stuff. Mm-hmm. He couldn't figure out, no one's laughing, this stuff is terrible. And they're trying to explain, no, we all have to be absolutely quiet. For the sound. The laughs will come in the theater, yeah, exactly. which they did. So I hope they realized that it was funny. Anyway, next track. <clears throat> you lied to me. Yeah, Dad, you. I don't know what about, but you lied about something. Anyway. The spoken word and those vocalises were not enjoyable for me, but I love the key this song is in a lot. There's also an interesting emotion being expressed here. She seems grateful that his deception is out in the open, because now that she knows he's cheating and lying, she's leaving. She knows she'll be okay, and now she's free. And boy, did she show them, because now she's got a catchy song, and he knows exactly who she is. And yet, even with the fascinating story and really good singing, I didn't find it good enough to download. I don't know why, but I just didn't. Fun, but not my go-to breakup song. Okay, this is from Into the Skyline, which I said before was produced by Shep Pettibone. Again, just not a good fit. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think Kathy really fights to overcome the coldness that's prevalent through most of this album. Um, you Lied to Me was the first single, and it only made it to number 32 on the Billboard Singles chart. Not a good sign. Mm. Uh, the song title pretty much says it all. When I first heard it, I thought it was okay, but something was just off. To me, it's like, this is like too much going on in this song, if that makes sense. I can't remember it really well, so that just shows. And it's kind of a mess, but the one thing, and I am trying to dig this up, I am searching everywhere for this. Um, if I find it, I will take a picture and send it to you. Okay. Um, I actually joined Kathy's fan club. Yay! One of one of the things that they sent that's nice. was this little um, little pad of paper, uh-huh. and it had photographs of Kathy on it, and it was basically the cover to the single "For You Lied to Me." So she's wearing like the gown, and it's got this ribbon going through. Oh yeah, I've seen that. It's a really, really good Dennis, photo. You lied to me. Yeah, yeah. So um, for some reason. Uh, my coworker slash friend Judy got a hold of one of the um, sheets of paper, and what she did was she whited it out. Kathy Dennis, you lied to me, and wrote in Susie Durkin's "You tortured me," and has a <laughs> caption of Kathy saying, 
I bet you're sorry for all those pranks you pulled on me now, Calvin. Oh my God, I love it. If That's I great. can, I, I hope I can find it. I will. I. It's I, gotta be somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I probably put it in too safe of a place so nothing can happen to it. It's oh, great. Next track, <clears throat> Irresistible. We open with the piano, which is pleasantly jarring for a '90s pop album. But reading the lyrics on her on their own by themselves, I don't believe her. See, with the music, she seems genuinely apologetic and sorry. But if you read the lyrics, if you're still obsessed with someone after you hurt them, tread carefully. And it feels like she's being overly saccharine to wear him down. It's like they're about to break up, but she doesn't want to lose him, so she plays the trump card of saying, baby, you're irresistible in the hopes it'll work. And also, if you listen to this... It would work for me because I'm dumb enough. <laughs> well, well, I would like to think it wouldn't work because you're married to mom. Yeah, that too. Uh, also, if you listen to this, you can hear the high notes Mariah and Ariana Grande would use all the time with their whistle notes, so you can see some of the influence Kathy might have had here. She's not the only one, but it shows there are certain things all pop queens do, whistle notes being one of them. What are those? Like super, super high notes, like when Mariah Carey sings, the last all I want for Christmas is you. Okay, and yeah. Like, uh, not like that, but it sounds like a scream, but not really. You you, you know well, it if you heard it. I think Mariah was out around the same time. Yeah, time. but as it proves my point, all pop queens kind of do the same things. Not as fun as I remember once I got older and paid attention to the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is also from Into the Skyline, and now you know how this collection got its name. Mm -hmm. uh, Randy Clark from Cashbox compared this song to Amy Grant's Baby Baby. Mm-hmm. Which I listened to. And I can definitely hear it. I heard a little bit of it because it had been a while since I listened to the Kathy Dennis track. And uh, a mashup just cries out to be made. It would be a very easy mashup to construct. So That'd mashers out there, please go to town on it. And make it available on Spotify because the Blondie's door mashup got taken off of Spotify. So I can't download it. Thanks a lot. Oh. <laughs> uh, this song is catchy. It's great pop. And it's easily the best song on Into the Skyline. Um, the song lives up to its title, and I really have to give Shep Pettibone credit for this one. He kept his foot off the gas, and we got a great pop song, and I just wish he had been able to do that for the rest of the album. Now, uh -oh. Irresistible only made it to number 61 on the Billboard single shots, and it deserved a lot better. Next track, Being With You. Just from the opening with how the instruments are arranged, you can tell that this love for Kathy is transcendental. If someone did this as their first dance song at their wedding, I would be impressed. And I also think it could really work. The love is so good, she doesn't want it to end, and she practically worships her partner. And the song is very gentle. It relaxes you and puts you at peace as you sway along. It's a more peaceful happiness, not one that's dramatic with parabolic highs and lows. But even that's not happiness, that's just toxic. But this track lulls you, and it's very lovely. Hey, you know what? As soon as it starts, I'm ready for it to be over. <laughs> Wow, okay. <laughs> it just it just doesn't stick with me. It's, okay. It's okay. I mean, I can remember little bits and pieces, but... Uh, so it's mid? It, I don't know what it is. Mid means middle of the road. <clears throat> yeah, or meh, or so-so, or come see, come saw. Mm -hmm. It's just... Uh, I just have feelings about Into the Skyline, and it's just... Meh, uh, uh. Okay. Next track, Falling. Kathy's vocals sound really good here, but the lyrics themselves are kind of bland and she deserves better. It can be summed up as, I'm falling in love, the end. All I could think of were the old Life Alert commercials. Help, I've fallen and I can't get off. <laughs> we get it. You're falling in love. You keep saying it over and over. Sheesh. Either this... that or Calvin pushed her down on the ground again. And my last note is, will someone please pick this woman up? Oy vey. Uh, this was the third single from Into the Skyline. It didn't crap the it didn't crap. It, yeah, it didn't crap. <laughs> it crapped crap. a bit. Yeah, it didn't crack the top 40. It maybe crapped the top 40. I'm not even sure if it if it cracked the Hot 100 in the U.S. Probably the, not. The synth bass line and the finger snaps help. But again, I'm like, ugh. Um, I hear an all-around coldness to the song. And this is where the album's title comes from because it's something about Carry Me Into the Skyline. And then... And then, I don't know if I sent this to you, I heard the PM Dawn remix. Yeah, that was interesting. Which I thought, oh my God, they rescued this song. This is so much better than the original. I wish they had remixed the whole album. Oh my God, PM Dawn, you're out there. 
Thank you so much. I, I appreciate what you did to this song. Next track, Change Will Come. The lyrics are kind of confusing because the chorus makes it sound like she's trying to give someone a pick-me-up saying, you need to get your life together and change will come. But it also sounds like she's reassuring herself with, I know that I'm out of place. So is she talking to herself or is she acknowledging that this person is a loser, but she loves them and if she doesn't help, no one will? Although this song does take me back to when I thought I was never going to get the heck out of where I was and I fell into despair. It also felt like with the how the backup singers, they sort of have a We Are The World vocal arrangement. Uh, yeah. That this could also double as a pop protest song and its vagueness and lack of attacking a specific issue would make it one the activists couldn't stand. Mixed feelings here, like, we're a pro something, like we talked about with the Paula Abdul album. Yeah, because there's... um. Another song, I think it either comes before or after Change Will Come, called We Got to Fight, and mm -hmm. it's kind of one of these... We're going to fight but, something or and, someone. And make things better, but I'm not sure what it is. And That's why there are songs where it's like there are protest songs, and then there's this. Wannabe protest songs. No, it's not even wannabe protest songs. It's I want to make a protest song, but at the same time, I don't want to lose any album sales. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think that's a genre we that, could tap that, into. That, that's why you have singles. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is another non-single, and it's okay. And I know I keep saying that, but that's really all I can bring to this. I'm sorry. It's just I'm, I'm kind of glad we're done with this album. Next, West End Pad. Whoever this person is she's singing about must have had a giant ego after this. Kathy has had a good shag. Whether or not she loves this person, we can't tell, but it's clear she's trying to distract herself. She's tried everything, getting a West End pad in London, buying a new car, going out with friends, and drinking, a lot of drinking, but her thirst is not quenched. She only wants more, which, wow. Listen, if you can't find a good time with anything or anyone else, maybe you need therapy. I was that way for a while, and then I finally let go and had a different kind of happiness with less drama. Her voice doesn't make her sound too obsessed, but you can tell she's still got it bad. Interesting up-tempo poppy song for the subject matter. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is from, this is the opening track to Am I the Kind of Girl? Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, this was Kathy's Britpop move, and I think it took fans unawares. And I know I was very surprised when the laser hit the disc. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the needle hitting the record. Anyway, mm -hmm. pleasantly so, though. I, I was just really surprised. Great guitar hook. Real drums, a bass, and keyboard. Very stripped down. Mm -hmm. Very catchy. Mm -hmm. Very, very catchy. Kathy's guy knew how to do all the things no one else can do. Even simulate the G-rays or stimulate the G-rays, which <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and ex assume that's another, another term for the old G-spot there. Yeah, I don't think you have to go out on a limb <clears throat> for that one. Well, apparently he's gone, I think, and... She's tried a West End pad, a classic car, her favorite drink, some close friends, a movie star. Oh, yeah. It seems like all these attempts to forget him, but they just leave her wanting him again. Mm -hmm. now, I did some research, mm -hmm. and a fifth floor flat, one bedroom, London's West End, rents for 2,600 pounds per month. How much is that in American dollars? 3,300 U.S. dollars for a fifth floor, one bedroom, West End flat. Yeesh. And the thing about uh, London flats, apartments, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. they always give you the option, you can pay by the month or you can pay by the week. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Maybe they figure, oh, they're not going to last the month. I'll just get it for how many weeks. <laughs> <laughs> or also, maybe it's also um, a psychological thing where if you break it up into weeks, it sounds smaller, but it's not. It's the same amount. That you would pay at the end of the month after the course of four weeks. Yeah, because some of them it's like, like if you pay the monthly sum, you're getting a better deal than paying the weekly rate. Mm -hmm. So you got to like do the math really quick. Next track, am I the kind of girl? Well, are you? I don't know. I don't uh, know. Is uh, Kathy? We'll uh, find out. Uh. So that intro sounded very far out in techno. Then the electric guitar kicked in, and I instantly recognized this. Reading the lyrics, I don't think this is about someone transitioning. I think this is about a woman who bucks gender norms, bad boy, tomboy. Or maybe she's a dominant woman looking for a submissive man. Or it could be she just wants to bend gender norms with someone and thinks it would be fun, because why the hell not? 
the chorus of am i the kind of girl who could be your boyfriend is catchy as hell and i still have a fun time listening to this as i picture the gender bending fun these two will have together uh kathy co-wrote this one with xdc's andy partridge and again it's stripped down catchy guitar hook and i don't know how familiar you are with xdc but no we haven't we'll cover them at some point um to me, it does sound a little XTC-ish in parts, especially the tear up, tear up tradition verse. That's like the music is straight out of XTC on that part. So she wants to know if she's the kind of girl who could be his boyfriend, the kind of Jill who could play with Jack, the kind of screw that is two box lax, <clears throat> <laughs> as Mr. Sewell would say. Oh my, <laughs> um, the kind of trouble that he'd like to know. Prince trod similar ground with. If I was your girlfriend on si- on Sign of the Times. Oh, did we listen to that one? No, no. we've never listened. Okay. We haven't listened to that one yet. Uh, I find this song hookier. Sorry, Prince. I I, I just do. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. I thought you meant hooker. Hookier. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. <laughs> Next track. When dreams turn to dust. This is the loveliest echo her voice. The loveliest her voice has sounded because of how she sings the backup harmonies and they put an echo on it. This would be another good first dance wedding song because, hey, everybody has doubts or doubts themselves. So it's nice to have a partner who checks in with you to remind you that, hey, I'm here. It's sincere, not manipulative. And having her sing the vocals herself really hits the point home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, And then Kathy hits the brakes because I guess you have to have at least one slow song on mm-hmm, album. Mm-hmm. Um, she's going to support him when times are bad, but he doesn't know if he wants her. It's okay. That's all I can kind of bring to it. Okay. It's all right. When dreams turn to dust, you got to get out the vacuum. <laughs> Next <clears throat> track, The Date. Ooh, we went from healthy to toxic really quickly. This woman is bending herself into the image that will most please her partner, not necessarily what makes her happy. I went through this phase a bit in college where I started reading more books on political ideology and watching highbrow films to catch the attention of some of the more handsome boys in the poli sci department. Like what kind of highbrow films? Uh, I can't really remember because I was in a film class at, at Rick and I liked the films that they showed, but I kind of... Uh, Maybe I just blocked that out of my memory. I don't, I'm not sure. But thank God I never became that person's object of affection because, and I'm going to drop an F-bomb here, that would have been a fucking nightmare. So okay. ladies, if you've ever contorted yourself into a pleasing shape for another person, be prepared for the song to send you back to some unpleasant times. I was not expecting a Kathy Dennis pop song to make me uncomfortable with my memories or talk about objectification, but here we are. Tread with caution. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is the one Kathy co-wrote with Ray Davies. She's prepping for a date, learning Oscar Wilde quotes so yeah. she won't let him down when she meets his friends. What kind of friends are these? Are they gay? No, they're Ray Davies types. Oh. I guess. Because <laughs> he would be impressed with Oscar Wilde quotes. Yeah. Um, so she's got the Calvin Klein gown, which you can get for under $100 on Amazon, hmm. and Christian Lacroix shoes, which go anywhere from $33 to $400 on eBay, depending mm-hmm. on what style you're looking for Mm -hmm. she tells him to bend her shape her but not to break her and to use her but he might lose her Mm -hmm. so it's i don't know if i bend this far i shall break yeah and at the end she sings it's only a date but the pressure she's put on herself i mean like for the love of god yeah lady you're kathy dennis you you go go be with somebody else Mm. someone who'll want you for you next track fickle my first note, what a fun word. It is. I don't know if this person Kathy is seeing is fickle, maybe more so leaning towards Jekyll and Hyde. Another song about a jerk. Fickle and Hyde? Fickle and Hyde, yeah. But I love the harmonies on the words fine, fine, fine. She also has a bit of Britney filtering on her voice, but not for long. It's just to create a cool effect briefly, nothing more. And yeah, this song is fine. Let's go on to the next one. After your notes. Oh, thank you very much, because I have a few things to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, from the Oxford Languages website, fickle, adjective meaning changing frequently, especially as regards one's loyalties, interests, or affection. Mm. Sounds very British. Yes. Quite. And I could never imagine an American pop song of any type no. being titled fickle. No. So this is definitely Brit pop. The um, producers would be like, I don't even know what that word means. Tough word to rhyme as well, I guess. Pickle. She, she, Nickel. Well, well, here's the thing. Kathy tries to rhyme it with riddle and little, as Ugh. opposed to tickle, trickle, <laughs> nickel, pickle, 
and sickle because none of those are none of those are gonna work. I'm sorry. No. You just you know, pickle. Finkle. Finkile. If you cram it together really quickly. Sickle. Unless you're like you know bringing in the sheep. It's a song about death. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, one night they're fine naming kids or sharing soap, but the next day someone else is on his motorcycle. She lists a bunch of opposite behaviors. My my favorite being you kneel to pray, then say, call blind me, which I had to look up, which is also known as call blind me, which is oh, caught me. Yeah. British slang expressing surprise or annoyance. Mm -hmm. But if you break it down, it's really a polite way of saying God blind me. Oh, which I guess that's is interesting. A, which I guess is a curse. And again, very catchy pop. Just, ugh. And very English. Yes, quite. Next track. That is why you love me. I listened to this on New Year's Eve, <clears throat> and it was the perfect vibe for starting the new year. She's happy, and it's rocking with some catchy backup vocals. Kathy's life is going well for her. Going to Paris, being on Vogue, and her happiness makes her partner happy. They're her morning kiss, which is so beautifully written. And she even hits on the stuff that makes them unique. She loves Michael Caine and sleeps in her underwear, and they wear suits and Adidas. Love this song. A happy bob. Okay, I always thought she skis in her underwear, but... Oh, know, I people, thought it was sleeps. I, it could be. I mean, people pe people sleep in her underwear, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, she puts the sun back in his life, makes the wrong seem right, and a bunch of other stuff, and that is why he loves her. But, but. he makes the beautiful scene plain and leaves her sheets to change... Uh, okay. Among other things, and that's why he loves her. Plus, they both seem a little off. She says she lives on Mars, and he puts her hair dry in the bath. Oh, no, that's suicidal. Which makes her laugh. Uh. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I love how the song starts off with that long, ah, uh, and the music's just, like, thumping in the back, and it's building and building and building. Yep. And then the tension breaks, and we get the song, and then... The song ends the same way that it starts again with that dun, 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 and just we go out on that note. Love that song. Just very energetic. Next track, Waterloo Sunset. My first note, this is the kinks? Wow, you'd never know if this was your first time listening to this song ever. I'd be very curious to hear what Ray and Dave thought of this other than being happy they got royalties. And I did listen to their original version. Okay, good. For me, Kathy's cover is trying to find one spot of happiness when life is stressful and chaotic. And everything keeps rolling on. Great take on this kink song. I think she did a great job keeping it sincere, but very much in her style. I prefer this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray Davies had been carrying around the metal melody for the Waterloo Sunset in his head for about two or three years. Originally, it was going to be called Liverpool Sunset because he was a lot more fond of Liverpool. But then the Beatles came out with Penny Lane. Oh. So Ray changed the Liverpool theme. Um, it was the first song he produced for the Kinks. Back in 1967, and it only took 10 hours of recording sessions to get it done. Mm. Ray observes life around the Waterloo District in central London. He sees, or maybe he imagines a couple, Terry and Julie, who meet at Waterloo Station every Friday night. Now, at the time, this is 1967, mm -hmm. Ray said, if you looked at the song as a kind of a film, Terry was Terrence Stamp, and Julie was, of course, Julie Christie. And the two of them were the couple in swinging London for a while. Oh. That's right. General Zod and Lara. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's a hell of a pairing. Yep. Wow. So Ray sings how they don't need no friends as long as they gaze on Waterloo Sunset there in paradise. Mm -hmm. And he feels the same way. But in his case, he says he, he doesn't feel afraid as long as he can gaze on Waterloo Sunset. Mm -hmm. Now, Waterloo Sunset is regarded as one of the greatest rock slash pop songs ever. Mm -hmm. The Who's Pete Townsend call it a masterpiece, mm -hmm. and critic Robert Chris Criscow called it the most beautiful song in the English language. It's been covered a lot. There's actually, um, it runs about 10 minutes, uh, I think it was part of a longer documentary, and it's just all these... Uh, British musicians just, like, losing it over Waterloo Sunset. <laughs> so you've got Elvis Costello, mm -hmm. David Bowie, mm -hmm. um, Bob Geldof, Paul Weller. Mm -hmm. um, and they just think this is, like, the greatest thing ever. Hmm. Um, and it's been covered a lot. Oh, I believe more that. More so in the U.K. than over here. Mm -hmm. There are versions by the, Dan by the Jam, Def Leppard, and... 
even David Bowie, which is on his 2003 album Reality. Oh, okay. And then we have Kathy's version. And I think she was very respectful to the original, but she definitely puts her own stamp on it. Mm -hmm. And I hate to admit that I've heard her version a lot more than the Kinks original, but, you know, these things happen. Mm -hmm. Anyway, her version has a full but not overwhelming sound. Mm -hmm. And Ray must have liked it, I guess, because he's in the video as Kathy's cab driver. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Next track. It's a very, yeah. sorry. It's okay. Very solid cover of just a great song. All right. Final mm. track, Tell Me. The closing track on this is basically the cool down of the entire album. And if I found myself and I found myself very bored, it becomes soothing after a while, but in a way that makes you tune it out and it feels like the fade out is going to come any minute, which it eventually does. Bit of a snooze, but a soothing one. Uh, this is from Move to This. I know, just when we thought we were done with the first album. Mm -hmm. I think this was put on last because it would have been odd ending this collection on Waterloo Sunset. Mm -hmm. I think which was a cover rather than ending it on a Kathy original. Mm -hmm. So we get a slow jam. And as soon as that trumpet um, kicks in, you know that clothes are being shed pretty quickly. <laughs> so she did him wrong, hoping he'll come back. But then she's asking, are you really going to take me home? Which kind of confused me. Mm -hmm. But then I figured, well, a song like this is more about the musical mood rather than the words. I mean, there are babies that need to be made, so, you know, we need to keep this going. Come on. Um, the chorus is memorable, and I guess in this case that's kind of all you need because it's like, tell me, baby, you're going to take me home? Well, with the music like that, it's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's... 99% sure. Yeah, yeah, that's going to happen. Overall, Kathy Dennis has some great pop hits. It's just whether or not her brand of ear candy appeals to you. If this was the assorted box of chocolates like we did for Paula Abdul, I'd have a lot more chocolates I like in this box, but there's still some chocolates I'd rather someone else enjoy. So if you're looking for some slightly buried 90s pop, give her album a try. Yeah, there's a couple of pieces of coconut in here. I will admit that. <laughs> I'll take the coconut. Um, but, I mean, at one time, I did have all three of Kathy's albums, but this was such a strongly curated collection. I really don't need anything else, and mm -hmm. I don't think, you, the listener, would need as well. So, enjoy. All right, as always, thank you for listening to the last installment of My Dad Listens to This. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz, because remember, the more you interact with the video, the greater a chance we have of appearing on the YouTube homepage. If you follow me on social media, I post the episodes there. If you're friends with my dad, tell him what you want to listen to, and he'll send an email right to your inbox. As always, thank you for listening to the latest installment of My Dad Listens to This. We'll be back next time with another album to nitpick and gripe about. Dad, anything you want to say before we sign off? Yeah, this is a little thing about how... Um, you had pointed out you wanted to do Kathy Dennis because you pointed out that we always seem to start a new year mm -hmm. with a female artist. With which... one exception, I think, which would have the Beatles with okay. Marjorie Wood, maybe. There was one exception one year. Well, Why? I mean, Revolver was our very first podcast. Yeah, that's true. So. so that was just something I never realized. And I thought, wow, she really keeps excellent track of what we do. So I officially hereby dub the keeper of the CDs. That'll make Justin and Andrew happy. Bye, everyone.